Dan from MakerForge here, and it's been a while since I've given an update to this project. A lot of things have been changing over the last few months, and we're finally getting to a stage where this version of the build can be finalized and made available fully to the community. So I wanted to take you guys through the progress that I've made and the features that it has as things stand at the moment. So whether this is your first time looking at the project or you've been following for a while, you'll be able to get a feel for where we are with things and what works and what doesn't. Let's take a look. I've made some pretty significant changes to the code base. One of those things is to be able to allow us to configure modules so they can be installed and managed via config YAML files. Previously, there was a huge bulk of code within the main Python file that determined which modules were imported uh, and how they were managed. But what I wanted to do was to be able to make it easier so that we could import modules or disable them as and when we needed to. So I created this modular YAML file structure. And the idea is if you need to create a module, you create the YAML file, you create the Python file, you specify the configuration details within your YAML file, and then the application handles the rest. The importing of the modules is managed by a module loading script, and the installation of both Python and Unix dependencies are managed automatically as well. So all you need to do is specify which you need to install in the YAML file, and it'll do the rest. Hopefully that will make customizing the application easier when it comes to building your own version. Now, the other advantage is it means that we can enable and disable modules on the fly for testing. So let's take a look at that now. I'm going to run through the whole list of features that the robot has at the moment. So first of all, let's take a look at the Arduino. The Arduino connects directly to the servos for the legs and neck. And because I often don't want to have the legs moving when I'm testing something to do with the software, I've installed this switch which connects to a pin on the Arduino that can disable the legs movements. If I reset the Arduino now with that functionality enabled, you can see that the legs won't move. And that's because it's in restraining bolt mode, as we've called it. This means that the head, the neck, the pan and tilt will be able to move, but the legs will stay static, although powered so that they're sturdy. So you can see as I lift it up now, there is no movement on those legs. If it were unpowered, you would see the legs would dangle because the weight of them would drive the servos. But I can also flick the switch and press the reset and we can watch it stand up. Now I'm holding out of the toes just for the sake of uh, safety, but it has an IMU, an inertial measurement unit, inside the, the board that's connected to the Arduino. So it allows it to balance the body if it tilts forward or backwards because of the weight of the head shifting as the head moves around. So you can see that happening now. It also has some very simple inverse kinematics which measure the height of the legs you can adjust the height of the legs accordingly and have the inverse kinematics model understand the angle of each joint. You can see it's not terribly stable, which is why I'm holding on, but it does work for a while. You can also see that the head is moving and animating randomly, and that's actually something the Arduino is doing itself. The Raspberry Pi isn't doing any of that. It's all in the Arduino. If I then flick the switch again, we can press a reset button on the Arduino Nano and the legs will snap back into their resting position and then we can continue on with the demo. What I'm going to do now is remote in to the Raspberry Pi and I have Mutagen, which is a code synchronization tool. What that does is it effectively means that any changes that I make to my laptop code will be synchronized to the Raspberry Pi once it's enabled. I also have the ability to remote in via SSH to the Raspberry Pi in order to run the scripts directly on the Pi itself. I have two scripts that I use. We have the install script, 
and we have the startup script. Now the install script is useful for enabling and disabling modules. So for example, if I was to go into the vision module and enable that, there are certain dependencies that it would need to install. And by running the install script, it will look at all of the modules that are enabled and then go through and install the dependencies for those. If you don't enable a module, it doesn't install the dependencies and it makes the whole system more lightweight and easier to work with. Let's take a look and see what happens when we run the startup script with very few modules enabled. You can see there's some debug output around moving the servos. And what's happening there is it's actually going through and taking over control of the servos. Now the Raspberry Pi is controlling the servos and you'll see that the animation from the Arduino has stopped. This is useful because when we're testing, we want to be able to make sure that we're not having conflicting signals coming from the Arduino as animation code and the Raspberry Pi. So you can see in the debug output, we have the NeoPixels enabled, which is the eye and the pixels on the side of the board as well, where currently none of those are lit. There are a few modules that we already have enabled. One of those is the animation scripts. Now that the Raspberry Pi has taken over control of the servos, the Arduino won't try to move them again without instructions from the Raspberry Pi. In order to resume that control, the Arduino would just need to be reset with the reset button on the board. So I can run startup and you should be able to see some animation happening. And that's because I've got a nod and shake head animation queued up. Now you can see that moves quite slowly and the speeds and the adjustments can all be made in animation files that are specific to the project. You'll also notice that the eye is lit up with a blue LED. That's the NeoPixel module taking over. And there is an I2C board hidden behind the main PCB that controls the NeoPixels, not only on the eye, but also on this custom PCB that we've manufactured here. And so these LEDs are designed to be status LEDs, so that depending on which modules you have running, you can create your own debug output to understand, based on the color or the intensity or the pulsing of those LEDs, what's happening in the brain of your robot without having to check the debug locks. You can also see that we have a buzzer here, and that buzzer is used for a couple of different things. Let's take a look. One of the features that the buzzer can do is play particular songs. And there are a couple of songs that I've queued up. One of them is Happy Birthday and one of them is Jingle Bells. Now, if I enable the command to execute one of those just as a test, you can see what that sounds like. We also have a feature called Braille Speak. Braille Speak is effectively the ability to turn text into tones uh, using a bit of a proprietary script that I created a few years ago. So for example, if I tell it to speak with the message hi, what you'll hear is because there are two letters, there'll be two tones per letter, so four tones in total. And you can get that to say, anything you want to really, as long as it's plain text. We also have a chat GPT module enabled. So if you set up your API key and store that as an environment variable, you're able to actually query it with text, either via speech input or through some other means. There is a custom log wrapper currently in place as well that outputs to the app.log file. And what that means is that anytime the application runs, you'll get a custom log that you can download. And there is also a previous version of that log stored so that you can see if something went wrong and the application quit, uh, you've got that stored for reference. You can see a motion sensor up here, which is a microwave motion sensor that allows you to detect motion uh, through walls or uh, anywhere that's near to the robot. It doesn't need line of sight. Um, it's a 5 volt module, but outputs 3 volts, so it can communicate with the Raspberry Pi. We also have a servo connected directly to the Raspberry Pi on the head to showcase how that would work. And at the moment, this is connected to an antenna, which we'll talk about in a second. 
So you can see if I run the script now with that Pi Servo example movement, you should be able to see the servo moving. And you can adjust the range of motion depending on your servo. There's also an inbuilt temperature monitor on the Raspberry Pi, and we have a module that can check that and broadcast the temperature every minute or as often as you'd like. And that means that if you find that you're running your Raspberry Pi too hard and it's running too hot, you have the ability to commence an emergency shutdown or warn the user or whatever you might want to do. There's also a speech input module that allows you to do voice recognition by enabling the module and setting it to listen. We also have a Telegram module so that you can send and receive messages with a Telegram bot. And the instructions for that are really simple to do. Once you've obtained your bot token, uh, you can connect your bot in Telegram uh, and use it to integrate with your robot. We have a translator module, which allows you to translate from one language into another. And this also works within the debug logs. So if English is not your first language, you're able to translate all of the debug output from the program. There is a text-to-speech module that works with two different types of text-to-speech engine so that you can configure your robot to speak via the onboard speaker. We have VM integration, so that if you have VM modules that you'd like to take advantage of, you can integrate those with the source really easily. And more recently, I was sent the IMX500 AI camera from Raspberry Pi. And what that allows me to do is send tracking information to a tracking module, which I can then use to follow me around the room. It's set up for basic object detection. And although you can't see where I'm sat, it's looking right at me now as I'm talking into the camera. It will continue to track me because of the information it's being sent via the AI camera. And the advantage of that camera over a standard CSI camera for the Pi is that it takes the processing load off the Raspberry Pi to focus on all of the other modules that it's currently running. Now you might be wondering what this small box in the back of the head is connected to the antenna. That's a software defined radio module. And it allows me to scan for signals at a certain wavelength that's often used for Internet of Thing devices. And what that means is that as I'm running that script, I can scan for weather station information or even tire pressures from certain vehicles. The antenna integrated into the head is the actual antenna that the STR module uses, and it's connected via the cable that you can see at the back. And finally, I wanted to talk about the personality module. This is something that I've been working on for a while. The idea is that rather than having all of the behavior defined within the main Python file, you can initialize the modules dynamically, have them communicate their inputs and outputs via the publisher subscriber pattern, and then pass those inputs and outputs into a single place where you can define how your robot behaves. And in my case, that's the personality file. So I have certain states, whether it's sleeping, awake, alert, or idle, and then based on that, it can inform other modules and tell them what to do. For example, it can turn the NeoPixels on and off depending on the use case, depending on the current state of the application. Having a single location that instructs all of the other modules is a much better practice than the previous version where every module was talking to every other module. is very, very difficult to debug. Finally, you'll notice there's some empty JST connectors here, and that's because we have additional modules that we can connect and disconnect as needed. For example, I created this module, which outputs a laser line so that you can use it for a scanning effect. This can be embedded in the head, and it could also be swapped out for an infrared emitter if you wanted to create something like a universal remote control. The three different types of ports correspond to I squared C, and then a 3 volt and 5 volt port, depending on the functionality you'd like to add. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of the kind of features that the robot has and what's currently possible. 
The community is growing fast and there are quite a few people who have succeeded in building this themselves and are adding functionality to it. If you're interested in building one yourself or you'd like to find out more, feel free to join the community. Links in the description. We have a comprehensive wiki that guides you through everything you need in order to build this yourself. Do you have an idea for a module that you'd like to see next? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope this gives you a better idea. Hello. It's not a great demo, is it? Wee.